Columbia University School of Public Health. She is the, one of, a very well-known activist for HIV AIDS, and she has worked her entire life to help other people in this city. Please welcome Terry McGovern. St. Pat's for all. It's such an honor to be here. Thanks to Brendan Fay, Kathleen Walsh Darcy, and the entire St. Pat's for all committee. Thanks to the Consulate General, Noel Kilkenny, and his wife, Hanora. Thanks to the Irish Ministry, the minister who's here. Thanks to the mayor and all the elected officials standing with us today. Thanks to Tom Duane for being such an honorable gay human rights leader all these years. Thanks to my family, my son Liam, my partner Sabrina Artell, my brother Larry McGovern, my sister-in-law Dorothy McGovern, my nephews Jack and Michael. Your presence here today means a great deal to me. Thanks to all you good people for standing with us against exclusion. To the organizers of this parade who continue to be told they cannot march down Fifth Avenue if they openly identify as gay, Samuel Beckett said, a dreamer is one who can only find his way by moonlight, and his punishment is that he sees the dawn before the rest of the world. Try again, fail again, fail better. Well, St. Pat's for All organizers, you failed to get into the St. Patrick's Fifth Avenue Parade as openly gay, but you have failed in Beckett's words oh so spectacularly. You have answered exclusion with inclusion and acceptance. You've met hatred with love and hospitality. And in this moment, all over the world, people are persecuted because they are LGBTQ. All kinds of laws are used to do this. Debauchery, crimes against nature, unnatural acts, crimes against the state. People are criminalized because of their choice of partners and gender identity. Sentenced to hard labor, whippings, forced psychiatric treatment, imprisonment, torture, or in seven country countries they're killed. 78 countries criminalize LGBTQ conduct or identity, 78. And that's just criminal laws. Discrimination is rampant. As you all know, in Uganda recently, a day after the president signed a bill punishing gay sex with life in jail, the names of 200 gay people, some of whom had never identified, were published in a tabloid. The last time some, that happened, a lovely man named David Cato was murdered. A month ago, Nigeria passed the same-sex marriage prohibition bill, which allows imprisonment of anyone who directly or indirectly demonstrates support or makes a show of same-sex relationships. Shortly after its passage, men were rounded up and beaten with sticks with nails. All over the world, raping of lesbians, curative rapes, forced marriages. India recently recriminalized sodomy. The discrimination is hardest on young people worldwide, who often lack any protection whatsoever from hate. Here in the U.S., LGBT immigrants experience the highest levels of violence. Transgender people, the highest level of human rights abuses. So you see, this is not really just a dispute about a small, benign matter. Discrimination is never a small matter. It institutionalizes hatred. Irish people of all should understand this well. In the name of religion, people keep trying to institutionalize hatred. Recently in Arizona, we want the right not to sell or do business with LGBTQ people. Nothing personal, mind you, just religion. The people who oppose gay participation in the parade say, just march. Why do you have to identify yourself as gay? This is religion. This is about our heritage. The parade is about Irish identity, not sexuality. These arguments just don't stand up. If you're not interested in our sexuality, then let us march with the banner of LGBTQ. Let us say who we are. I'll tell you what, it matters.
I'll tell you what, I've never been that interested in forcing people to accept me as a lesbian. There are so many complex components to my identity. But I learned that whether I forced it on them or not, some discriminated against me. Just like our friends who are listed in the Uganda tabloid, despite keeping their sexual behavior to themselves. You see, you really can't control other people's bigotry. It's phony, this argument, that we'll all be well if we keep things to ourselves. Why should we? I am proud of my family, the life I've lived, my son. There is nothing to hide. What is culture? What is culture? The beliefs, custom arts of a particular society, group, place, or time. Well, we gays have certainly been a big part of the arts, the Irish arts. What is heritage? Something that comes or belongs to one, one by reason of birth. I am of Irish descent by my mother and father. I am certain that my ancestors fought for human rights in Ireland. Do I have no heritage? Is my son Liam not Irish? Our contributions to culture don't count then? We are not part of the heritage? Is that what they're saying? I'll tell you what. Culture is not owned by a few. It's not owned by the Catholic League or those threatened by difference. Culture is owned by us. And we can and we will enrich and participate in Irish culture. We always have. We just never have been acknowledged. My heritage is rich, diverse, and robust. My Irish culture is courageous, kind, funny, and creative. You're all evidence of that. We march today for human rights. We march against discrimination. And we honor, oh do we honor, that complex, living, evolving, beautiful landscape called Irish culture. I am so certain that what we are doing today, resisting exclusion, is cultural. Let's celebrate.